It's difficult to maintain control of a supercar going faster than 200 miles per hour, even for experienced race car drivers. Although Formula One drivers develop the abilities necessary to tame these wild horses over time, they remain vulnerable to harm due to the high frequency with which accidents occur. Welcome back! Today we are checking out some horrifying and the worst car crashes in Formula One history. Let us start. 1955 Monaco Grand Prix, Alberto Ascari Let us start with 1955 to find F1's worst crashes. The 1955 Monaco Grand Prix saw F1's strangest crash. Alberto Ascari began second. He battled J.M. Fangio and Sterling Moss. Ascari and Moss battled for the lead after Fangio's transmission failed. Moss's engine failed on lap 80. Ascari should have taken the lead, but he crashed. His automobile missed a chicane and crashed through a barrier. Then, his automobile crashed into the Mediterranean Sea. He was in water. Everyone feared the worst when his car vanished. He thankfully swam to a boat with only a broken nose as his only injury. This was a miracle. I mean, his car sank. That is probably hard to escape. Ascari perished in a testing crash a few days later. The crash was separate from Monaco. 1982 Belgian Grand Prix, Gila Villeneuve. Gila Villeneuve was a popular F1 driver in 1982. The Belgian GP was the season's fifth race. Qualifying determines the starting lineup for every race. Villeneuve qualified sixth, 0.1 seconds behind Didier Pironi. Villeneuve wanted to improve his time. He overtook a slower automobile and approached it. Villeneuve was not sure which side to pass on. He rear-ended the automobile and went flying. Villeneuve's car flipped many times, ejecting him. His body leaned against a fence. Villeneuve got a catastrophic neck fracture and was taken away by helicopter. Later that evening, he died on life support. It is one of F1's deadliest crashes. His body flying from the car is frightening. Safety has improved to prevent this in the future. 1994 San Marino Grand Prix, Roland Ratzenberger. Tragic accidents marred the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix. First in qualifying, first year driver Roland Ratzenberger was trying to qualify for his third race. Ratzenberger missed a corner and hit a barrier. His car slipped into the following turn. His automobile crashed at 190 miles per hour. Ratzenberger's drooping head in his car was terrifying. Officials rushed to the automobile but could not help. Ratzenberger died from a skull fracture. The crash could have been avoided, which is sad. A curb on the previous lap damaged his front wing. Ratzenberger went one extra lap instead of pitting. Ratzenberger's front wing disintegrated on that lap, causing him to lose control. The weekend was not without tragedy. Rubens Barrichello shattered his arm and nose the day before. Then, Sunday's race disaster. 1994 San Marino Grand Prix, Ayrton Senna. Ayrton Senna is an F1 legend. He won three titles. Senna switched teams in the offseason and started 1994 poorly. Sid Watkins persuaded Senna to stop racing after Ronald Ratzenberger's death. Senna ignored him and kept racing. He was the 1994 San Marino Grand Prix pole sitter. He led Michael Schumacher on lap 7. Senna tried to turn left but hit the wall. Senna slowed down but hit a wall at 130 miles per hour. Senna's right front wheel smacked him in the head when he slammed the wall. The skull fracture was deadly. A piece of debris entered his helmet, causing significant blood loss. His tragedy may have led to greater safety practices. These safety measures prevented injuries and saved lives. 2014 Japan Grand Prix, Jules Bianchi. The 1994 San Marino Grand Prix improved safety for 20 years, but then the 2014 Japan Grand Prix was tragic. Rain affected the race's track conditions on lap 42. Adrian Sutil spun off. Jules Bianchi hit the turn and the crane, removing Sutil's car. His roll bar was damaged, so his automobile slid beneath the crane. Safety officers took Bianchi from his car while unconscious. Weather prevented his flight to the hospital. Bianchi's head injuries required surgery. His condition did not improve despite months in the hospital. Bianchi died July 17, 2015, nine months after his Japan disaster. The accident was controversial. Some thought it was a mistake to wave a green flag through that location, and others thought a safety car was needed. Formula One closed cockpits after Bianchi's incident. A closed cockpit would have reduced this pilot's injuries. 2020 Bahrain Grand Prix, Romain Grosjean. 
Romain Grosjean's crash during the 2020 Bahrain Grand Prix was scary. On the first lap, the back of the pack stacked up. Grosjean hit Daniel Kvyat's vehicle and crashed at 119 miles per hour. His car broke in half and caught fire after hitting the fence at an angle. You worry when you see a crash like that. His car was in flames. Many fans were worried about his health. The driver compartment survived. The halo prevented a major head injury. Formula One mandated it in 2018 and it has already saved many drivers. Grosjean praised the gadget. I think it's the greatest thing that we've brought to Formula One and without it, I wouldn't be able to speak with you today. Grosjean only suffered second degree burns, unbelievable considering his accident. That is all for today. Like and subscribe to see more. Thanks for watching.